I was reading an article this weekend and it just kind of blew my mind to what's happening with online businesses, social media. But in 2015, you need to protect your online assets like never before. I'm about to jump into that in just a second. Be sure to subscribe to the blog. Be sure to get your free books because everything's below. There's some things that I've been doing and I have decided to share. First thing we're gonna talk about is protecting your YouTube account, protecting any account that lets you have two-step verification, two-step. Passwords really don't work anymore. And I'm gonna give you some insights to what's happening and how this has happened to quite a many people. It happened to me, even with uh, one of my Twitter accounts. Essentially, whenever something comes up on Facebook, like, hey, what street did you grow up on? Or what's your father's middle name and all this other stuff, this is trolling for databases. What the hackers are doing is getting so much information about you, they don't need your password because they have enough information to correctly guess the security questions if you have them enabled. And that's how they're defeating a lot of things. Two-step verification, which Gmail has, and I enabled that once I saw 2012 on this channel, once I saw the potential, and I recommend that you enable two-step verification on your YouTube accounts, all your Gmail accounts, your Facebook accounts, and um, Twitter has it. And I think, I don't know if Instagram has it. Hadn't looked into that, but if they do, go ahead and do that. Because once someone gets your account, you are screwed. I think Twitter even has it. I mean, Instagram has it. But that's something you should stop this video and do right now. Doesn't matter if you're a big channel. Doesn't matter if you're a small channel. You're open to being hacked and exploited. Now, what is two-step verification? You'll see it once you go ahead and get into it. But even if they have your password, they can't get into your account once you activate two-step verification. Super, super sweet. And if you have a growing channel and you have not done this, it's not a matter if you're going to get hacked. It's a matter of when you're going to get hacked because there's so much value that is coming on online assets. Because another thing that I was reading was people are losing access to their Twitter accounts, Facebook pages, if they have a business and they're commingling business and personal. This is something that I am guilty of myself, and this is something that I will stop as of today. If you have a personal Facebook page, leave it personal. Do not, I repeat, do not post your business stuff on your personal page anymore because if you get sued or something happens, they may legally be able to take your personal page as well as your personal, yeah, they'll take it because it is now part of the business. That's why commingling of funds. Now you can't be commingling of personal social media and your business social media. I know, it's mind boggling. I, I, I did a little research this weekend and I saw it and I was just blowing my mind because I knew about the hacking thing because I've had accounts hacked, I've had websites hacked. That's one of the reasons that I'm a big proponent of two-step verification. But what blew me away was how people are losing their social media accounts in lawsuits or how people are being denied access to their social media account. There was a case with LinkedIn. If you have a LinkedIn profile and you put such and such company in your profile and try to leverage that company name, you could be the benefit of the beneficiary, or well, not the beneficiary, but the victim of a lawsuit. It is that deep. So I recommend that for all business purposes, you create completely business related LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Twitter, everything has to be separate. And to add even more protection, incorporate. This is something that's going to go counter to something I put out because I didn't think that you really needed to incorporate until the business started earning money. But if you know that you're going to invest or you're already heavily invested in the online space and you haven't incorporated an LLC, and I'm going to talk about what you should, what I think you should do, is you're a sitting duck. You're an absolute sitting duck. Uh, I have a few LLCs and there's some other stuff that I've done. So, number one, 
this is how you, I think, you know, talk to a CPA, talk to a financial professional or attorney, whatever you need to, before you do anything, you know, spend some money, talk to somebody, depending upon your situation, because everyone's situation is totally different. But I think you should do an incorporation, which is more expensive and you have to publicize it. And this is why you should do an incorporation. Do you do the incorporation? Then you have that incorporation form the LLC, and then you put your online assets in that LLC. It's double layer protection, and it also prevents you being uh, regarded by the Internal Revenue Service as a disregarded entity, which means, yeah, you have an LLC for tax purposes, it doesn't mean shit. They're going to tax you like you're a sole proprietor, unless you fill out X, Y, and forms. But there's another reason I want you to do an incorporation, and yes, this is expensive. This is something you should consider, and only if you're really going hard with your online assets. It's the ability to completely separate yourself from it because some LLCs can be penetrated, but you do the incorporation, you form the incorporation, and you put it in your articles or incorporation. This is why you need to talk to someone if you don't know how to do it yourself. That this corporation does this, this, I mean, just an online asset corporation. It's just, this corporation is in the business of providing services, education, whatever you do in your articles of incorporation, and you put the online assets in the articles of incorporation. So there is no if, ands, and buts of these are business related accounts, they're for the corporation, bam, bam, bam. Another reason that you want to do the incorporation, then form the, no, it's really, really key. The corporation has to be the founding, the form, the form the LLC. Because if you do the corporation and then you do the LLC separately and you have the LLC under your name and the EIN is going off your social security number, you completely defeat the purpose of the protection. It completely <laughs> it doesn't work that way. So by doing that, you also create, and you can make your incorporation like a holding uh, you know, corporation. It just collects money. It does nothing else. It just collects money. And then the LLC is the active part of the empire that does stuff with business. So essentially, if the LLC gets, you know, I'm getting real technical, but if the LLC gets sued, then potentially how you set up, and once again, and I'm going to repeat myself because many people are just going like to run out and do some stuff, and then if shit happens, they're going like, well, you know, he said do this. And I'm like, no, I'm saying talk to someone. Spend some money to talk to a professional because I'm not a professional. I'm not offering you any legal or financial advice. I'm sharing with you some things I think you should do to protect yourself as you form your online business. And the reason for the incorporation, which you could call any old thing, and LLCs are like a hundred bucks, um, is you can put different things, you know, that you can have that corporation form another LLC or you can have that LLC form another LLC. There's a lot of ways you can do this, but essentially you want to be as far away from your online business as possible. So if someone sues you and then they like, well, hey, you know, um, Bill was posting on his personal Facebook page a lot of business stuff and we feel that a lot of his friends are customers and we want that. That could happen. As scary as it sounds, it can happen. It has happened, and it's you know, and you don't want that. So, really, really start to separate your online business from you. Now, this is relatively new. This is relatively a brand new area for courts. A lot of this stuff is just really kicking off in the last five years. It will accelerate. It's not going to slow down. It will accelerate, and the reason is. A person can come out of nowhere because this guy waving green, this guy gets $4,500 to walk through to a promotion because he made a video, got online, he created this asset, and he makes money from it. And you're going to see more and more people do this. So anything that makes money is a target. I don't care if it's 50 bucks. I don't care. And in Project YouTube, in the legal structure where I went into some really deep stuff about how you can use a YouTube channel to offset your job income legally, fairly. It's amazing the opportunities that are presented to us with this online world that we're operating in today. But there's also a great deal of danger, a lot of danger. So for those of you who have YouTube channels and you, your channel's been active two, three years, you've got subscribers, you're putting out content. I'm telling you, 
two-step verification today if you have not done it. Also, look into forming a corporation for your YouTube business because this is another thing that many people have not thought about. If you're a YouTuber and you really like your niche and you see yourself doing it for years and years and years, many of the things that you're doing now, you will be able to monetize on a totally different level in two or three years. There's just more and more stuff that's coming out. There are more and more things that are possible. There are more and more things that you can do to make money. But the thing is, if you go ahead and set yourself up as a corporation, go ahead and get the business checking account, do all of that stuff. You're just going to position yourself to benefit much more. And you'll have to start looking at the tax issues and you'll, you'll start looking at, because I just see that anyone who really puts out a channel and I see a big jump for many people. It's that five, six, seven, eight year mark. I just see people who just like accelerate. If you're already positioned and you have the legal infrastructure, the business infrastructure, you could just make so much money, protect yourself and just really, really set yourself up really nicely for the future because this thing is going to grow. Now, another way for you to protect your online business is to treat it like an online business. There are many people who have you know, it's just like side money. It's a hustle or something like that. There are so many entanglements that are on the horizon. It is stupid. I just created the YouTube channel, put stuff up. Didn't really, really think none of this stuff was going to happen. And what I'm telling you is we're at the precipice of even greater things happening, bigger stuff happening. So a few other tips, you know, today, don't wait go draw your Twitter, account, everything, two step verification and start looking at forming a corporation and have that corporation for an LLC. If you don't have the money for the corporation, at least form the LLC and then later on form another LLC and then put the assets in that LLC because it's coming. Many people who are on YouTube who are well known, who have a following, expect the lawsuits to come. I know this is really scary. I know it's real fucked up, but it's going to come. And that's one of the reasons that I clarify, I'm not your legal professional, I'm not your counsel, I'm just sharing with you my experiences, I'm sharing with you my awareness, I'm sharing with you what can potentially happen and more than likely what's gonna happen if you are successful. People are gonna hack your Twitter accounts. Twitter is money. If you've got a million followers, that's money. If you're Instagram, you got several hundred thousand followers, that's money. YouTube, if you got several million views, that's money. And what do we know? People follow the money and it's coming. So I implore to you that you start protecting yourself and your interests today. Don't wait. Don't sit on this because I learned my lesson. Like the first time I got hacked and it was Urban Pack Rat. I just woke up and the shit was gone. And this is like, what the hell? Now, fortunately, I was using just host at the time. I called him up and I talked to someone and he says, well, when you signed up, you had, um, I was saving my site every day. So they just restored the site and everything came back up in a matter of minutes. But it was just like, damn, I could be taken out the frame just like that. No rhyme, no reason. Also, going back to, like I said, I discussed in Project YouTube, there's a lot of things that you can now do with your YouTube channel that you couldn't do three or four or five years ago. And I mean, it's, it's mind blowing. You could create a YouTube channel, not make any money and save money. It's sick. And that's just one of the benefits. But being hacked, going back to that, being hacked, it woke me up and it happened 2010. I was just completely caught off guard. I was just blown away at how easy it was. And then the guy told me where they got in, what they did. Then they came back. A few months later, they came back, but I had my site saved. So when they did it, I just went ahead and uploaded it myself and it was back. This, I mean, and it was just, I think part of the reason was I was talking much smack. I was saying a lot of stuff, the stories, you know, many people were very, well, it's just not right that you're taking their stuff and you should give it back. And that's their people's stuff without once again, knowing the rule of law. You, when you rent a unit, a storage unit, you know, that's a lease agreement. That's why it's so long. That's why you have to sign here, sign there, sign this. 
It's a lease agreement. Just like you rent an apartment, just like you rent a house, you are renting a space which is realty. That's why it's such a complex form, because you're renting real estate. People sign this stuff off, then they lose their stuff and they give up their rights because they never knew their rights. And that's what I'm saying. Uh, this is gonna be a relatively brand new area in terms of law, entertainment, because you could start a YouTube channel and within two years to maybe 10 years, you could be somebody. Uh, I was noticing that a few people recently put out books on Amazon, uh, top YouTubers, 400 reviews first day. Five, I mean, they have so much reach. They have so much credibility that they could put out a book and become a bestseller and the book could be just like how they use the bathroom. It could be just that insipid and they'll make money because of their reach and their following. And in the future, and this is another reason that you need to protect yourself now, marketing is about to change. All of these ads, I mean, people ignore ads. Then there's retargeted where the ad follows you around and people are like becoming desensitized. So the only way that you're going to be able to reach people is through telling stories, content marketing, and developing a tribe. Very, very powerful stuff. And if you are set up for that, you can benefit like you would not believe. These people who have these videos, they go viral, that are about five or six minutes long, and they all go ahead and throw an ad up on it. These people can literally make hundreds of thousands of dollars in the, first, in the year if the video continues to accelerate and get views. One video. Now the thing is, if you're already set up for that, it's just a different thing. It's a, it's a much, thing, much different thing because YouTube is also offering, first you have AdSense, then you have paid subscriptions and you can rent or purchase videos. They're coming up with more stuff. Now that you know everyone is going mobile, you are, you know, you can, you know, with the little cards as they call it, iCards, you can click on mobile. There's so many things that are about to come with mobile and it's just going to be very business related. And the thing is, for you to have this opportunity, make money, and then lose it or have someone literally come in and steal your channel and steal your AdSense accounts, change the bank account, and get your money. All that stuff is automated. There's nobody looking at it. And anytime you want to, you can go in and change who owns your YouTube account, your AdSense account, your AdWords, just go in there, change the stuff. I did it. You know, in 2012, I made a family decision that I just was going to put stuff away for the kiddos. And since 2012, I literally don't own shit. I manage it for, you know, the future, but I don't own anything. And that's one of the things that you're going to have to learn because ownership is critical, but management and control is even more critical. Just seriously, just like if you're a real estate person and you own several rental properties and the, I think this is how they still do it because I'm not into real estate like I used to be, but every house has, is in its own LLC. Now, you know, a big protection would be to put everything in like a trust, you know, but it would have to be paid off for you to do that. So there's so much stuff that's going on and your online digital assets are becoming just like, you know, we'll just call it IP, intellectual property. It's becoming very, very valuable. This we're moving into this really exciting yet scary place with commerce and apps and websites and YouTube channels and podcasts. If you form a podcast and you have a partner and you have no written agreement, hopefully it works out well. But if things go sideways, it's your word against their word, which could be just a legal quagmire. It can be super, super just over the top insane. It could be incredibly bad, really, really bad. So when you look at that, and when you understand that, I do believe that you will put yourself in a position to win. Because one of the things that I do, and I talk to a lot of people and people recommend, because there's this uh, notion of being everywhere and on every platform. I understand it and I get it, but I believe that you should be good with two, three, four things. Not just one. I think being good at one thing is great, but if that one thing changes on you then you're screwed 
we're in a situation where you need to be good at many different things. Not excellent, not the, you know, the genius at it, but really, really good. Yet you have to have working knowledge of a lot of different things to be successful today. That is, these are the times that we live in, and this is what's going on. So for those of you who want additional help with this, I got a few options. You can just uh, set up a consulting, consulting call, or you can join Project YouTube, because the information that I got this weekend, I'm going to add different things to Project YouTube, because you need to do it. You, you have to do it. You, you, you gotta do it. And if you want to talk about any of your other things, once again, I'll put a link here or I'll put up one of the eyes. I can't, you can't point at it because they keep moving it around. If it used to be up there, now it's down there. Who knows, it may be over here. So just click that, set up your consult and we'll talk about it and I'll just walk you through the process. And with that, this is Glendon. I'll see you in the next session.